Uh, all right. So let's uh, let's see. Do you guys want to? Should we pop these things open and drink them before we get to uh, the shenanigans? Yeah, I think so. All right. Yeah. Uh, Solomon, why don't you start off? And remember, we're all tasting stuff, so it's not it's not a ten minute tasting tonight. I, you know, I'll, I'll keep those for uh, YouTube and Stay Rab Wine Blog TV. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe, like Ryan Hannigan of Focus on the Beer did today. You're gonna be very disappointed if you're looking for a, a the next episode. It's it, it'll be a while. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I will say, uh, when I I had so much fun just kind of going in the way way back machine because uh, both the bottles that I got have a uh, wax uh, covering over it, so I had to go back and find myself reminding myself of how to open it up on Stay Rab Wine oh, Blog gosh. TV. Uh, you didn't I use do... you didn't use any fire, did you? No, no, no. I do the okay. friction technique where I just rub the palm of my hand uh, over the top of the wax for a little bit and then just put the cork uh, screw straight through and I got the cork coming out like a mushroom. I didn't even really have to clean up the lip too much to be able to uh, get a good pour. But Peter, I just have to ask, um, what's your favorite technique for uh, opening a wax top? Well, my favorite technique is to give it to somebody who's never done it and just see what they come up with. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, you're on the right track, but the rubbing the top of it, um, I've never done that. You just go right through it like it's not even there. And you maybe go a little bit further into the cork than you normally would to make sure you don't break the cork in half. If it's an older bottle, it's especially important that you don't uh, destroy the cork. But yeah, you just go right through it like it's not there and you pop it right out. And if you feel like it, you can peel off, like I've done here. You could peel off the uh, a little bit if you like, but it's not like the wax that we used when I first started at the castle. I've, I've been at the winery for uh, 13 years now total. And we first were using this wax that kind of turned into a powder and our older vintages have that. That's a little bit messy. This wax is very clean. You, once you pull, pull it open, you can peel it off if you want, or you just go for it and pour it. You're not going to get any in your wine. That's so interesting. So I feel like I talked myself into, and and John, we've had this conversation before. I talked myself into doing the thing where you tap the top of the soda can before you open it up <laughs> when you don't really have to do that. Um, but yeah, the, I, I, I will say, Peter, I, I love your style of just just give it to somebody else and, yeah. and see what they do with it. <laughs> um, I was considering like putting it into some warm water, but that's just, that's just no, crazy. I, I think if you warm it up, you might make it worse because then it'll make it flexible and it'll tend to bend. You want it to be brittle. So when you open it, it snaps. Right yeah, on. and then and I, then you do have some folks that just start from the little drip right here and try to peel it like an orange. That's a tag, right? That's what that's how you're supposed to do it, John. I, you, you've I, been I dying feel, to say I something. Feel, I feel like that technique of just sticking the corkscrew through it wouldn't really work with those beer bottles that are. Then they have the metal cap underneath the wax. I no. feel like that wouldn't work on that. Yeah, and then the carbonation, you might be in, a, in for a little surprise. <laughs> so, so I shouldn't have just slammed the neck on my table and busted the bottle open. Or you I, didn't I, I did it, it wrong. Open. You didn't I, saber I, it open? I, 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 the saber didn't did work either. Well, I, except work? I went, I, I sliced at it like that. So That yeah. was a bad, bad idea. So, hey, check it out. <laughs> Uh, again, this is the 2018 Napa Valley Reserve Chardonnay from Castello di Omarosa. Um, and, you know, beautiful, typical uh, golden Chardonnay color on this. This is 100% Chardonnay grapes, 10 months uh, surly in 100% new Burgundian French oak barrels, 75% mallow. And the nose is just this beautiful uh, amalgamation of like baked apples and baked pastry. There's got to be, I'm sure some people like to put those two things together, baked apples and baked pastry. I'm not sure how that would work. Maybe a pie or so. I don't know. But it, it's a little bit of that like warm apple pie. And honestly, with a little like uh, creme brulee going on as well, maybe a little like whipped cream. I wonder if apple pie and whipped cream go together uh, too, but beautiful nose and like a little like um, flinty 
uh, almost like graphite minerality there uh, on the nose and on the palate. Oh God, I miss this. <laughs> it's been a long time since I just sat down with just a beautiful Chardonnay. And I feel like, you know, I, I know the folks watching live as they ought to do every Tuesday night uh, <laughs> at 7, 7.30ish Pacific uh, at welikedrinking.com forward slash show. They didn't realize that I was running a little bit late today. Um, but on a day like that, where it's like, I, I feel like I've been just on the go all day long. This is the perfect beverage to have in my glass right now. This would be great with like a chicken dish, but honestly, just on its own, this is, this is beautiful. Peter, I'm in love. I'm falling back in love again. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, the way you're describing it made me wish I opened that one up tonight. Uh, <laughs> but I've, I have the Chardonnay so frequently. It's one of my, the reserve Chardonnay we make is one of my my most favorite wines and I go to it a lot. So I wanted to, to go to something different today, but uh, I think you described it very well. Um, we started making this wine, uh, I don't know. I think we've probably made six or so, six or seven vintages of it and definitely want to make it in a, it's, it's clearly influenced by the oak, um, the malolactic to give it richness on the mouthfeel. It's not, I wouldn't put it in the buttery category, but it's definitely leaning towards that rather than, you know, uh, metallic or, or super acidic. It's a bit more on the, the richer, butterier side. Um, and then the flavors, that, the, the fruit flavors you get, maybe apple or pear, go really nicely with the, the kind of baked, uh, baked pastry and uh, brioche flavors you might get from the the aging on the uh, the yeast leaves and the barrels that we use. And, uh, it's really great. It really is a great product. It's one of my favorites uh, that we make. I, this is fantastic, and I gotta say, like I kind of I I uh, I I became a big fan of your winery specifically um, through the Chardonnay. You know. In my younger days, all I thought of uh, for Castilla de Amoroso was, uh, you know, a place to to take my lady to impress her because it looks really cool. But the wine is actually fantastic too, and that's <laughs> that's what I think really wins people over. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs>